And thank you very much, gentlemen. There's the kind of victory we're looking for out of the TSM squad here coming into week two. And unfortunately for Splice, this does mean no quarterfinals for them. Still the opportunity to knock Samsung down a peg or two. But let's dive into this one here and figure out what adjustments TSM made because this was a very stark contrast between game one and game two, starting in champs. Well, the first thing is letting Syndra go through is asking for a ball beating back to the dodgeball in high school. I mean, you're just going to get beat up nonstop, and that's what Bjergsen did. And the thing that I didn't like about Splice is the fact that they went with a no-pressure matchup into the Vladimir, and we've seen how Syndra to Vlad plays out. Vlad gets pushed in, Syndra has the opportunity to roam. That means that if you pick a top laner that is really volatile, a matchup like a carry into the Nar, and you have Syndra go into your lane, you're going to lose that lane, and you're not going to have that win condition. I definitely uh, blame Yamada Cannon here, honestly, <laughs> with the Splice Draft, because you said it perfectly, I feel. Uh, banning Rumble in the end, when you're planning on playing something like Aurelia anyway, who can just go up against the Rumble, and you have the same kind of situation where you can try and camp that lane and snowball the Aurelia, really doesn't make any sense, because you also end up trading. The first rotation is so important. If you give Syndra, you better get something really, really important on your first rotation to make it worth it. They end up trading Elise for Rek'Sai, so that's like a slight, slight gain maybe for the Elise, and that's it. And the Karma, while she is a good pick, so many other supports to play, so many other different things. We see Alistar, Braum, Nami. Karma definitely doesn't have enough uh, value to be worth giving away Syndra. And of course, when picking Syndra, you know the Vladimir's into it. The difference as well with Splice is they go for the Aurelia, so there's going to be a split pusher, and they end up putting themselves in this awkward 1-3-1 one, one situation where maybe if they had a team fighting top lane as someone that can actually take part with the team and run 4-1, having the Vladimir just go back and forth between lanes, there's a better chance that the pivot would be more effective. Yeah, because what's going to happen later on in the game is Splice wants to play on all three lanes at the same time. So they want to put Vladimir in the side lane, they want to put Aurelia in the other side lane, and then Ezreal sits in mid with the support. The goal for them, or the hope, is that Syndra has to go to that side lane with the Vladimir and defend. And then you isolate her, she's alone, she can't kill the Vladimir, you have a winning side lane there for Splice. Top lane, Aurelia has the winning side lane, you have two lanes pushing down, it's all great. Problem is, Syndra is not going to go to that side lane unless she's behind. She's just going to sit mid, wave clear. She can 1v2 the enemy dual lane, and when you have... No pressure mid, you can't play side lanes because you can always get roamed on. And you saw it even in the builds, right? Aureli going for that Blade of the Rune King second is a huge telegraph or I plan on sitting in the side lane against Nar for the remainder of the game. Now, aside from a, you know, a repeat weird invade from Sven Skarin in game two here, I do want to push past that. The recovery for TSM this time around was much, much better. And this is where I want to look at the roams that they were making, Bjergsen getting out of lane visiting that top lane, making sure they're keeping Wonder down. Yeah, I think Team Solomid is strongest when Bjergsen is on a mid lane pick that can push, and Svenskaren is on a mobile jungler who can gank. And that's exactly what we just saw right here. Mid lane gets pushed up by Bjergsen, he roams to top side, and if you do not call miss instantly, and your top lane then just leaves the tower, just give up the wave, leave the tower, he's going to die like we just saw now. So T TSM just got like the best picks for them around mid and jungle. And to your point about calling Mia, the same thing happened in the top side when the dual lane from TSM recalls goes straight to the top lane. Nobody's calling this out and you have a Jin sniping the Aurelia with the Braum coming in onto the Nar. Once again, putting that split pusher even further behind and Aurelia just never got a foothold in the game. She was unable to put any side lane pressure and in the team fight, she's just gonna get blown up. And that's exactly what happened. A couple early kills onto Syndra made Bjergsen a monster. And let's take a look at the Acer replay where TSM really put their foot down here in the mid lane. Starts off as a 2v3. And this is a part of the lane assignments to go all wrong here. Vladimir in the bottom lane, Aurelia trying to be in side lanes. You have an Ezreal Kamen near the mid. They can get instantly obliterated. And you see exactly that happening, of course, through Bjergsen. As a result of this having a numbers advantage, the team composition of TSM is actually allowed to excel. They've drafted themselves pick and dive, not just poking them down. And it is so easy to combo all of their spells together and make it work. Yeah, and I think this replay just showed exactly why this comp wasn't going to work for Spice unless Bjergsen fell really far behind, but he didn't. Obviously, he had a great game. This was another good team up from it. Obviously, a beautiful combo now. You just keep knocking up two members a few times, a then, you kill them. Death. then you kill them in the end. So it was this really, really well played game by TSM. Uh, they got exactly the picks they wanted. Bjergsen got to Rome. He got revenge from that last game he played against Crown, where he had a, such a poor start. And we got to see a big difference. When TSM has a mid lane who can't really roam, and especially when he also falls behind, they do very little early to mid game. 
when they get something like Syndra and they get to push it over and over, they do a lot. Yeah, player of the game is Bjergsen. Huge contrast between the Zillion game, the Syndra game, and we, we you mentioned the statistic in the two solo deaths mid lane in the first game. Well, here now he's dominant, has a crazy scoreline, 13-1-8. and eight. Yeah, I was a little worried in the beginning because he was missing a lot of CS, but once that... Once then Scarin invaded in a really poor timing, and the bot lane of TSM blew all summoners to try to save him. Luckily for him, Bjergsen got double buffs off that pick and then was able to, on the backside, kill Trashy as well. And from that advantage, just having that small little lead was able to just snowball so much. And that's what you want to see out of a top top-notch player like Bjergsen being able to take a small lead and translate it into impacting the entire map and just carry the game. Yeah, I feel like to summarize that point as well, there are players and teams who you don't want to give Aurelian, Soul, or Syndra to because of the strength of their mid and jungle players. You give them one of them, they outright win the game like that, and Bjergsen very much deserving of that. All right, well, Game three is in the books, and TSM is on the board in Week 2. When we return from break, Samsung Galaxy and Royal Never Give Up are back on stage. Stay with us. No, I was, I was playing AD and I laned with his Thresh and... It was I was a playing AD and I laned with Biofrost Thresh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh shit. my god. <laughs> I'm breaking, I'm breaking of course. Bobby? All right, I'm sorry. But awesome. I keep stalking Thresh. <laughs> but Trashy could join up soon. He has Flash of himself and the heal's not going to come down in time. First blood, but it's an exhaust into a stun, into a very dead Elise and down the water spout she goes. Oh, He's going to get a stun actually in time, just barely. Now time for the knockup into the stun, into the unleashed power not even needed. I'm Kill her. Kill her. Kill her. Kill her. Nice. Look at Black, look at Black. Goodbye, double it for the killing spree now. And look at the Meganar catches several of place. They're gonna run out of health. That's several more. If they have one more match to play, and if they can win the next one, they will make top eight at Worlds.